Hello YouTubers, um, it's nice to be here again in my bit of a messy workshop, but it will get tidied. What I want to show today is how to put a leaving edge using a hand plane on the edge of this window. Now, it's quite simple really. First of all, you obviously need a plane that's relatively sharp. This one is pretty good, it's got thick plane of irons in it, which do work a treat. But to start with, what we will do is, you'll see, if I put the run this on here, that should be fairly square, which it is. We don't want it square, we want to have a lead. And when I mean a lead, I have an ax, very slight angle, right? The idea of the angle, it provides clearance for the hinges. So if you look at these hinges, they're, um, there's a thickness there. Obviously, they are going to be. Um, let into the frame and also the window but they still require a little bit of clearance and what I'll do I'll start off with by setting the plane iron at a slight angle for the first few cuts passes of the plane so I'm not going to I'll, I'll push this lever here to one side it will set the, the plane iron at a slight angle now I've actually done the wrong way because I don't know if you can see, but the plant iron is higher this side than it is that side. Well, if I oppose that to this window, it'd be the wrong way. Because the window's closing into the jam on, the, on this side, it requires the, the angle to fall that way. So the angle needs to come down on that side. So I've gone the wrong way. So what I'll do is, oh, bash things about. <laughs> um, I'll go the other way. Yeah? So now, in fact, what it's going to do, it'll play more off on this side and that side because the plane iron now is on the opposing side. Right? So, what we'll do first few passes, start and make sure that I start, follow that through. That's followed through with the plane, that is. Nothing else, thank you. The end. You know, it's, it's, it's a narrow shape, and the reason it's narrow shape because the, iron is, the plane iron is set at an angle. So it's taking more from one side than it is the other. So what I'm doing, I think they're creating an angle. Three times. Turn that a bit. And now it's getting wider. Because as it takes more material off, it's more plain iron in contact with the timber. In this case, it's oak. Alright, so I've got so far three. And then I'm going to straighten the plain iron up. So I look down here, it looks parallel. So now I've got the start there, I can then carry on. Um, Running the plane, the hand plane over, which in this case is Stanley Bailey number seven, to be Victor Plane Iron, so I like I said. And we can run that. Then it looks like the right. Now there's a bit of short grain here, so it's not starting very well. Oh, we've got short grain, it's basically here, the grain is running up, this way, uh, sorry, this way the grain's run down. And this way, the grain's running up a bit. So it's not, as I'm trying to start with the plane, it's jumping off a little bit. But you just have to be aware of that, and then you can tie that through nicely. And once you get full with shavings, you know that you can see it basically you've gone all the way through. So you say it's only taking a very small amount off in this case, because the grain isn't very clean. If I just grab that shaving, there we go. There we go. Look at that. The iron's only set very, very, very low, so it's taken very small, a, a small amount is being removed. But as you look at it, they're almost like quick lines. Now that's obviously each one of these little gaps you see here, where it's not quite intact. Yeah, that is, each one of them represents a piece of grain where there's more resin in the timber. Yeah? So that's a very thin, nice sort of shaving off there. It could do a bit in sharpen, but we'll do that on another video. Um, there's this one, I've got to top off another window, it's much, much thicker, hence it's more more substantial. Um, I think it's a thicker than that here. So if I do that, you can say it's quite, quite thick. Like, like Goliaths. <laughs> So I'm a bit busy. But, um, there you go. So now if I run the, uh, the square, then there is a gap. 
on this side underneath it so it's not perfectly square anymore. That's a little bit too square on that end, so I still need to find a bit more off. So what I'll do is my own judgment there. Eh? I shouldn't need to do that, but obviously I didn't hit it right in the first place. But that, no, that's good now. And to demonstrate, you probably can't see it anyway because it's probably too far away. But um, if I put this square here, I should be able to pass the paper through this to that, to that side, that side, which is the closing side, and then the face, I, I can't get the paper through. So that shows that's us. For you guys, you can see that's at an angle. And the idea is, everyone provides clearance, so I've got a wind now, just had my dinner. Um, <laughs> so I've got the hinge, the hinges will be let into the uh, edge, in this case, this one will be let into the edge of the window, like so, effectively. And we'll do it with the jig and the router. And this one will be set, let into the frame, and they'll effectively provide the opening and closing of the window. But because of the design of these hinges, or any hinges, the fact that they have to be let in, you have got a little bit of clearance there, but let's say for instance, I know, you put a screw in and the screw doesn't go in perfectly straight. So let's say because you've got your screw, your screw here, your screw goes in, if it's, it's not the right screw, but it's a screw, um, if it goes in like nice and straight, yeah, you've got plenty of clearance, right? But if you've gone on a slight angle, the head of the screw could interfere with the other hinge. Especially if you've got two screws hitting each other, the window is not going to close correctly, it's going to bind. It's got to try and, as you close, it'll spring out again. Yeah, we don't want that obviously because it provides a strain where you don't want strain. A bit like my corset.